Uh, you can see my screen? Yeah, we can. Awesome. All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Ray, and I'm part of the, the web development team for this project. And we are called the Wireless Invaders. And we were able to build an amazing product in just three weeks through this camp. And we call it, it the Fripen, a fruit ripeness detector. Now, you may be wondering why this would be even be useful for farming. Well, this would be a super useful for farming because it would be able to help the farmers to be able to maximize the value of the fruits by sending the ripest fruits to the local markets and saving less ripe fruits for export. And as well, the farmers would be able to save loads of money and loads of time when picking the ripe fruits or the unripe fruits. So now I'm going to show you guys a quick demo of exactly how the AI works. So I'm going to click the button, click to test fruit. And then we have a couple pictures and I'm going to click, click the first picture, which is going to be unripe blueberries. And let's see if it's able to detect that. So we can see here that the AI was really able to detect that, yes, these are unripe blueberries up to with a 93% confidence rate. So let's try Let's try a different fruit. Let's try maybe unripe apples. Let's see if that'll work. And then, yes, we can also see here that, yes, it was also able to detect up with a 97% confidence rate that these are indeed unripe apples. Now let's give it a little bit of a trick. Let's see if it's able to recognize two different fruit. Let's see if it's able to recognize the same fruit, but two unripe and ripe fruits in the, in the same picture. So now we can see here that the AI was really able to recognize that there are ripe bananas on the right and unripe on the left. Now let's make it even a little bit harder for the AI. Let's see if we can do blueberries, unripe and ripe blueberries. So again, we can even see here that the AI was even able to detect that there are unripe blueberries and even ripe blueberries in this picture. So now you guys may be wondering what's the data for this project. And so now we'll hand it over to Daria and he'll explain that. Okay, you guys just saw our model perform. And here is the data analytics. Next. Uh, Yes. So this is the image distribution pie chart, and it pretty much shows the number of pictures of each category the model used. So for ripe bananas, it would be 230 pictures. For unripe bananas, it'll be 263. Now you might be two. Yeah. Now you might be wondering that according to this pie chart, ripe and unripe blueberries are kind of un, underrepresented. But um, Rain, if you would go to the next slide. Yeah. So this is the instances distribution, and if you look at that, the number of ripe and unripe blueberries is really high when it comes to instances. And that is because even though the pictures were less, each picture of the blueberries were of bushes with 20 to 30 blueberries in each picture. So the instances is really high because of that. Uh, next slide. This is the confusion matrix. And according to this matrix, you can see that our model performs best with ripe blueberries and unripe apples. And it's a little weak with unripe bananas, but it still works really well with those. This is our precision line graph. And this pre pretty much represents the number of correct positive predictions made out of all the positive predictions that could have been made. So you can see the model is improving itself as the number of epics proceed. Next slide. This is the number of, this is the recall line graph. And this is pretty close to the precision line graph, but this is about false negatives. So as you can see, the higher the graph is, the lower the number of false negatives there are. So you can just notice how our model is improving as the number of epics increase and it's just reducing the false negatives rate. Now I'll pass it on to Rex to do the rest of the data analytics. All right, so in this slide, we can see like the predictions we see in like our 1DB while we're training in real time. Uh, next slide. Um, so this is our confidence versus precision chart, uh, as you can see, as the confidence goes up, the precision also goes up. Uh, yeah. And then this is the confidence versus recall graph. So confidence and recall have like an inverse relationship. So meaning that like if one goes up, the other one goes down. So in this case, if the confidence goes up, the recall goes down and vice versa. And then same thing with precision. So if like the recall goes up, the precision goes down. And, uh, same thing. So this is also F1 versus confidence. So um, this chart shows us that the optimal F1 score is 0 .0 0 0.78 and is achieved when the confidence is at 0.5-ish.
So this is our About Us page and these directions on the front is just basically saying you can either click the arrows to move or you can use the, f the four arrow keys on your keyboard. Right, left, we'll move it right or left and up and down we'll flip the cards. So next slide. So this is just me. If you hover over the card, it'll flip and you get to see like description of the person on the back. Or if you uh, move the mouse away and then you use the arrow key, then it will also flip and it will permanently stay there for the arrow key. You use the upward arrow key. And so all this is just mainly about us and some quotes that we want to just like put out about AI camp. For each person and what they did, I was mainly the data scientist and also math slash stats. All of us did plenty of HTML and CSS. Um, Rex and Daria was also data science and Rain and Andrew were mainly the, uh, the web dev, you know, and Andrew was our product manager as well. And of course, not to forget Hiram. <laughs> he was our leader and our instructor who led us through a lot of bugs and he taught us anything we didn't know, we didn't understand, we just went to him with a lot of stuff. And yeah. All right, so these are the steps we took to create our final project. So our AI camp batch was focused on computer vision or like image detection. And so we had to come up with ideas, including image detection. And eventually we all decided on fruit ripeness detection, which we later named Ripen. So to train our model, we had to find different fruits and find ripe and unripe images of them, then annotate them so that the algorithm knows when it's ripe and when it's unripe. And so since most of us didn't have a lot of exposure to machine learning, we got lectures on different types of machine learning projects, neural networks, and the basic features of neural networks. And so with the annotations we made, we trained different models. And essentially we ended up training, I think eight to nine models. And for each model, we would change like the data set and then change the parameters so that we could essentially get the best model. And then we created our website and then using HTML, CSS, and Bootstrap. And we had a homepage, about us page, data page, results page, and the journey page. And then obviously the last step was to deploy the model. And we saw that earlier on the homepage. And then we did face a lot of challenges and obstacles. So we had to train a lot of models to improve on like, and we kept improving on the last one. And then eventually we got our final model, which worked great. Yeah, and there were a lot of um, small problems in web development that our amazing web development team was able to overcome. All right, so for the miscellaneous. And as a note, you know, our model, we were actually pretty scared at the very end because when at first when we looked at the graphs, we thought it was uh, doing pretty good. But then when we actually tested it on our website, we kept getting like a ripe apples 0.96 on a green leaf and things like that. So we were really worried, but then Avila, um, he told us that we should probably go and clean our data up, make sure every, everything is labeled correctly, and boom, we found a bunch of labeling errors, and after fixing those, our model like literally exponentially became better. So, thanks Avila. All right, so this is the miscellaneous page. Here we have our tech stack um, at the top left, and that's everything we used. So, we also have the reason why we we're making this. and. The reason we are making this is adding on to what Rain mentioned in the very beginning, because this AI is um, it can help reduce human labor, which increases efficiency, and it'll increase the speed of identifying, which can result in more money saved and also actually safety, because robot work can over time save millions of dollars worth of human hours, and having AI and robots to do the repetitive work, such as picking ripe fruit can also reduce the possibility of injuries, like when someone falls off a ladder, or even heat exhaustion when picking um, fruit off trees during the heat. All right, scroll down. Thanks, Rain. So we also just put the type of machine learning problem just for kicks and giggles. It's a supervised learning where fruits are given labels such as ripe or unripe, and then the model learns to determine which class an observation belongs in. Finally, we have our links. Uh, we have the GitHub link to uh, the code of this website and for everyone we have our github and linkedin and that's that's our project and of course right. oh, final shout ahead. out to Hiram again 
best instructor ever. Yeah. <laughs>